Hello, creative ones. This is Robin Dudley Howes, the artsy bohemian. I am in my studio in Los Angeles, California, and I have a gift for you. It's my secret resource guide for the unconventional journal and paper crafter. These resources are resources that I use all the time, and they've taken years to accumulate. So those of you who have never signed up for my online school or who have never signed up for any of my classes, this is a gift for you. Those of you who already belong to my online school probably already have this. You'll get an email once you sign up, the link below, and you can download this for yourself and then print it out like I have. I've made it into this cute little pamphlet. Now, since you're signing up for my newsletter, just know that you won't be bombarded by emails, only inspiration. Thank you. Hey everyone, it's Robin. Thanks for coming by. Today is the monthly artsy boutique and I have put together some really fun kits. I really had a good time putting them together so I think you'll like them. Most of them, pretty much I'm going to tell you right now, are, are comprised of very old or antique things. They're one-offs. Uh, some of you know that I sell junk journal kits in my store, in my Etsy store. And over the last couple of years, I don't, I might not have enough of one particular thing, like a piece of fabric or some ephemera. So I have a little pile of that and I've kind of put together kits based on color and they're geared t more toward altered art and journal making. So let's start. So this is the pink one and I wanted to show you that it's going to be coming. A lot of these things, a lot of the kits are coming in pouches and bags that I've um, collected over the last few years at flea markets, like this one, which is pretty amazing. I don't know what it was used for. I have a feeling it might have been for clothespins. It has a, a handle on it right here. I just absolutely love this fabric. And... It's faded, uh, it's, I have no idea how old it is, but it's circular. And so everything I'm gonna show you underneath this is going to, can fit inside of this with more room. And um, yeah, it'll be part of the kit. So love this, but I, you know, I'm just getting rid of stuff, so. So here is a hanky with some kind of I don't know thread work on it I'm, I'm not sure if it's I don't know if it's crochet I don't think it's tatting but it's some kind of linen it's, so it's a, a pale pink this is from France never opened it's not old it's probably about 10 or 12 years old but it's just so pretty pretty pink these are super adorable I just by chance when I went to the doctor the other day and there was an estate sale and I had to stop, of course. And they had this box full of really old millinery. So you guys are going to reap the benefits. They're velvet. They were probably forget-me-nots, um, but they're all velvet. And they might have been a color at one time, but so that'll come with it. This is some beautiful trim ribbon from France. There's about... 18 inches of that and about a, a yard or so of this torn adorable fabric uh, one of you had given some to me and I actually found some more at Joanne's the other day and I bought all they had because I love that fabric a, a sweet little doily a little fabric swatch with pinks and a crochet flower this is really old this this fabric right here I don't have much I think it was a pillowcase. These are just samples, all with roses or flowers, very girly. I pinked, I, I took my scallop scissors and I scalloped the edge of two ends. And now this is pretty amazing. It's like a blush pink. It is a journal and it's embossed with somebody that looks like a, the goddess Athena maybe, but it's called the Log O Life, dedicated to posterity and it has these swallows on it. It's just gorgeous. It doesn't have a spine, 
but it's a book for a baby. It's a baby book. There's a little bit of writing. There's only two pictures in it. I just think it would make a great junk journal. Uh, I'll just show you a few of the pages. It has really beautiful pale images on it. And here's the baby announcement from 1945. And yeah, just this book was from 1939. Just really pretty graphics on it. Very sweet. There's an envelope back here, but there's nothing in it. There's a, um, there's something in here talking about when they had, they had gotten into an automobile accident, but nobody was hurt, I don't think. Burst stones, signed month, isn't that interesting? Even back then they had that. Really, everything's in pretty good shape. I think there's an award in here. These were never even used. I just thought it was such a sweet, just really pretty. Look at that graphic right there with the moon. So yeah, this is gonna come with this because it matches the pink theme. And then this is Baby Coronation Pageant from Lowell School Auditorium in Arizona. And then there's the two pictures. I'll find them right. Not. Oh, there's actually that I didn't see that one. Home sweet home. Downey, which is a a, t a city here in LA. This is the first home daddy and mother bought. There's a baby picture, a receipt from 1960. Yeah, so all of this will be in here. Look at that. Baby hands and feet. That, there's some dyed coffee filters that are in this pink tone. You can make pretty paper flowers with those. There's also a pink doily. It's a fairly, fairly large one. Probably about 18 inches long. And then the, the thing on the bottom is so pretty. It's a pillowcase. It might be from the 50s or 60s. And I, um, this in here. I thought it would be pretty to use. I mean, it, I think you can probably actually still use it, but it might fall apart after you wash it um, because of the age. I got this stuff off. It's so pretty. It's ballerinas. It's probably like a king size. It's a pretty big pillowcase, 100% cotton. Very faint. It's kind of faded. So sweet. And then roses, of course. I love the roses and the swallows. And it's the same print on the other side with the topiary, topiary of roses here. So that is going to come in the kit of pink. These will be listed to, on today. <laughs> I'm saying tomorrow beca because I'm filming this on Sunday night. Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, by the way. Uh, okay, so that's the pink. I'll have a, a list, a, um, a link down below for the website for my Etsy store. I do this every month, and it will be at 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time at exactly 5 o'clock, and it usually sells out. 
pretty quickly. Okay, so the next one is this color green. And uh, I don't want to get too distracted because this is another one. But this is going to be all in tones of a fairly true green color. Um, you get an old hanger goes with it and some old trim that you can lace trim in between it's like an eyelet trim there's about a yard of that this is not old this is a uh, coffee dyed lace there's a yard of that and then some little flowers on this card <clears throat> There's an assortment of really cool beads and buttons and unusual little charms. Some of them are really old. Like this one's pretty amazing. I love this button. It has a leaf. It's brass. You can tell it's old by the shank in the back, the way that it's assembled. Yeah, and this one's really old too. I don't know if that's real, real old, but it's like a, a lighthouse in a boat. So there's some pretty things that you can use for journal jewelry, or if you make jewelry, you can use these. Like I said, there's quite a few old pieces. These are some old green buttons. So that's gonna come with that. This is a really beautiful green doily. That would be great for a junk journal. And then just swatches. This is very old. This is from an apron. This is somewhat old. And then these are not, not as old, these other pieces of fabric all in the tones of green they're just scraps that I, I I can't I don't really like making one type of junk journal kit I like to have several all all the same so I can just grab them when I place my when somebody places an order except putting these together is fun because they're each one is completely different I will never make another one like it I the fun part for me is the creative um, assembly of it this is beautiful from Penny Rose Studio, Juliet. Gorgeous kind of olive green. And then this you can actually use for a cover of a journal. It looks like it was a sample. It's like a jacquard. But it's a really beautiful, you know, forest green, I guess you would say. And it's an upholstery fabric probably it's it when I'm looking in my camera the color looks darker than it actually is it's a very pretty green and then also what you get with this green kit is um, these really really cool old playing cards they really feel really nice but look at the patina on them I grabbed them. I went to a uh, a parking lot sale a couple weeks ago and got these from a vendor. Super pretty. And it's just a sample of a uh, taffeta. And then I just, this is some vintage ledger paper that I had stamped on with one of the red lead stamps. And there are two time cards. One's folded so you can make a journal out of it if you want to and the other one you can do whatever you want with it. But that was fun to put together and you get all of this fun stuff. So now we'll move on to the one that's more of a celadon, kind of a minty green. And there's some really cool crochet trim made with this beautiful minty color this I absolutely love get that butterfly it's a handkerchief and there's some embroidery looks like on the edge here with some crochet and then there's this is another handkerchief with this just that other that same type of I don't know what that's called. If anybody knows what this is called, um, let me know in the comments down below. And then a bouquet of leaves. These may or may not be old. I think they are old. 
not exactly sure, but they're really pretty. And they're tied with some kind of celadon green color. A circle that you can make a yo-yo from. This is from a very old chenille spread. This is a book that I made. If you want to know how I made it, I have a video probably about a year ago where it's one of those accordion books. So it's ready for you to fill up and make your own junk journal or put pictures in there if you want to. You can decorate it with some of the things here. But that's part of this. This is really pretty cheesecloth in this very pale it's not a it's not the exact same color but i think it'll go well if you wanted to accessorize with it this is interesting it's a chenille applique i don't like these you can cut those off i just bought it because i liked this color and how soft this was so you could cut these individually and make really pretty rosettes with it so that's that one. And then I put this in a box over here. Just to make sure I keep everything together. All right, now we're coming to purple. Look at how yummy that is. So this one, there is also the vintage. Uh, mill millinery some flowers these were once a, a flocked velvet so it looks like it was a, a a violet color with some pale peachy pink color flowers and it's pretty fragile I had to rewrap that with some um, florist tape because it it was pretty fragile it was going to come off and it's a pin so it probably was a boutonniere or a corsage or something these are old handkerchiefs hand painted this is for victoria bc probably a souvenir and then this beautiful crocheted actually this looks like it's tatted with the violet tatting and cream tatting on there everything some of these things will come in this pouch this is not old this is new it's from it's like a la sac i think yeah the sac you also get another assortment of really cool beads and plums and deep purples. I made this little flower for you. It's a it's a French wire ribbon, this beautiful kind of cranberry deep burgundy color. This is some velvet that I made into some ribbon and then this beautiful ribbon. I also, I believe this is from France as well. I can't remember if there's 18 inches or two feet, something like that on there. Some sparkly fairy tulle. If you don't like glitter, let me know and I won't put this in there. It's, it kind of sheds. I know some people hate that. so. Um, just let me know. This is a gorgeous jewel tone purple and it's metallic embroidery. It's probably from India. So wouldn't that be a beautiful trim for a junk journal? And it's a fairly nice piece. Probably about a yard wide, I mean long by about 12 inches, 12, 14 inches wide. I know that there's a term for fat quarters, but I always forget what it is. So it might be like a fat quarter, I'm not sure. And then a really pretty old large doily in purple, very pretty. And I have another purple kit underneath here. So this is kind of a bigger kit. This also has two vintage doilies with a little bit of embroidery and some really dainty lace. And this is probably silk. 
this is probably not as old, but I'm not sure, to be honest. There's some kind of flocking on it with little either violets or purple roses. This is a, like a stick-on fabric that I put onto this die cut, so I thought that would be pretty because it's in the violet tones. This is also, this is from 1998. It was never used. <clears throat> I think it's a great base for a journal. And in between are the, is this glassine paper. So it's probably for photos. You can actually open the top and stick photos in there if you want to, to, or maybe a painting of yours if you want. So I don't know how many pages. There's probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, ten pages, and they're really thick. It's like chipboard, super thick. So definite floral <clears throat> theme. And kind of goes with the theme. It's not in perfect shape. It's there, you know, it's older. It's over 22 years old. So it's like 23 years old. And but it's not in too bad of shape. Also, this was from a kit from one of my journal kits that I had put together and then I'd never used it. So I thought I would just sell it as it is. Lots of little snippets of ribbons and trims. And uh, this really cute doily with a, an embroidered or needlepoint flower on there. It's mauve. I think my friend Kim gave that to me. This is this gorgeous purple eggplant color lace. Here's some more of that trim or the fabric from India. Tim Holtz, that's new. And then this piece, you could probably actually make a, a smaller junk journal. This is a beautiful, really soft uh, upholstery fabric that you could use as a cover. And this is from an old Laura Ashley skirt. It has flowers on it, some uh, floral print. More of the tool. And then this has a pretty sparkly little bits in it. So this... What I like to do with these is make them a paper clip like that. So it's an just an old earring. It's not old actually. Just an earring clip, clip on, and you can just use it to hold your pieces together like this. Or your pages together. And then a couple of other sparkly little bits in there. I couldn't fit much in there. It was kind of full and, and it's a, a pretty little tin with some violets on there and then this is a really amazing piece of upholstery fabric with elephants on it and you could do a, a beautiful cover with this if you wanted for, for your next junk journal and it has these muted eggplant colors with some darker greens and grays. It's really pretty and it's a fairly big piece. Yeah, it's probably about a yard wide. I mean long. Excuse me, I keep saying wide. And I don't know. This part is cut right here, but the longer part, I don't know how long that is, like maybe a foot and a half. But yeah, there's three elephants. No. There's two, one, two, two and a half. <laughs> two and a half elephants. And then everything will be bundled in this beautiful shawl. You you can cut it up if you want or not. You can actually wear it. Uh, I just have a ton. I don't know if you guys, some of you know this already, but I used to be a professional belly dancer. So I have tons of scarves and belly dance stuff. So used to dance here in LA for lots of celebrities and at restaurants and shows and so isn't that beautiful it's gorgeous it has this beautiful trim on it and it's really long so like it's one two three four 
like four and a half feet long and about uh, maybe two feet wide because of the trim here. So this is, all of this will be wrapped up in this. And then I have a few more. I know this is kind of long, but I kind of started getting carried away. I was having so much fun putting everything together. I'm gonna put this to the side. Okay, so this one is a blue one, and uh, there's some buttons. There's five buttons on this safety pin. They're kind of a bluish gray color. They're old. These are some really um, unusual. I've never seen this before, the, this blue color, but they're like a navy blue stamen, and those are old as well. This is probably pretty old. It's a, an enamel swallow. It's very pretty. You can tell by the, the way that it pins in the back. It's a couple of yo-yos. I have some more, I think, that I'm gonna put in there. Here's another clip. This is a shoe clip. And again, you can use it to clip onto things in your junk journal or close it, keep it closed if you make a smaller type of a junk journal. This is a handkerchief. It looks like it was never used. The spot on here is from where the the sticker was. It probably said Irish linen or something like that because that's what they, but the, I don't think this is actually linen. But they, they would put stickers on the, the handkerchiefs to let you know where it came from usually. So, but like I said, I'm pretty sure it was never used. And it has blue in it, so I thought it would go good with this. I made a tassel out of some yarn and some buttons. You can hang that from your journal if you're into blue. And then this cute little tin, and this has some old buttons and some sparkly beads. This is cute. It's a little ladybug, a little glass ladybug button. And then this clip, this is probably fairly old. And there's also some newer fabrics in here. This is a newer fabric. They're long pieces. I, like I said, they might be back quarters, something something like that, maybe eights. Um, just thought they were pretty colors of different blues. This is kind of a dusty blue, I, I think. Love this cottage rose. And this is a pretty long piece too. It's about a yard by about eight inches wide. And then this is old. This piece is old. I know that for sure. And it's this really beautiful, I don't know if it's a, a cotton blend but it would make, you could probably make at least two journal covers, maybe more with this. And it's a long piece. Yeah, so folded, it looks like this. Yeah, you definitely could make maybe four even smaller ones, journals, journal covers with this or whatever you want. Also comes with some vintage needles. It's blue, so I thought it would be cute. Made in West Western Germany. Almost all of the needles are in here too. And the last one part of this is these really cool very old decals. I don't know if they would still work, but there's instructions in here. They would be kind of cool for a this color, this kind of theme, you know, with these primary colors. But yeah, the original instructions are in here. Peasant transfers. <laughs> and there's some on the other side too. I'll show you those.
These are pretty. I think I bought it because of these colors here. Very old. All torn up a little bit. Discolored. So that's the blue kit. And everything comes with this very cool bag. I have a feeling it might have been for yarn. I washed it. It doesn't look as, like it doesn't, I mean it's old. But I did wash it. I rinsed it and, you know, got it as clean as I could. But what do you guys think? You think it was for yarn? It looks like it was a yarn bag to me. Some kind of interesting wide woven fabric with cactus on it. And it these are wooden and it looks like one of the ends came off and so whoever had this bag tacked it on there. Put a tack there so it wouldn't move. So this will come with it because it's kind of in that blue family. This is cool. This is a little tin box and it's all rusty and dirty and old. I did wipe it down gently with a damp cloth. It has the original seal on it which is in paper. It says 100 some kind of cigarette box. So just know it's not, you know, new looking or anything it was kind of rusty on the bottom so I wiped it well with a damp cloth and a little bit of a cleaner and then I put a, a a bag underneath it so everything that was on top wouldn't get rusty so this kit would be fun for altered art Here, here's some chandelier crystals are real they're not plastic 100 year old Charlotte. This is a real Charlotte. This isn't from Tim Holtz. She's dirty. Well, she's not dirty. She just looks old and kind of. She's missing her arm and part of her foot. So these are. those. A lot of you already know what these are, but they're over 100 years old. They're from a doll factory from Germany. And also, this is also an old doll head porcelain. Both of these, both of these are porcelain. So if you take my my altered art uh, jewelry class, the bottle class, I use some of these sometimes for the the bottles. And this has a hole in it. So if you make jewelry, these are fun to use as a focal point because you can stick something in there and make you know a flower hair piece or something. You can paint it. So it's broken. You could also make it into a doll if you wanted to, a miniature doll, or put it on top of a um, a bottle, which is what I show you how to do in the in the class. This is some mo mo more of that really adorable eyelet trim. A yard of that. These are from a millinery bag that I of stuff I got. <laughs> Just little bananas. <laughs> you probably put them in a hat at some point. This is really cool, the packaging on this, these Singer needles. I just thought it was cool. It's old. You know it's old because it says printed in USA. There's no needles in it, but I just thought it would be kind of a cool little addition to your junk journal. And then some more of these really cool rose cards. Queen, deck, Queen Jack Queen 10. Great for your junk journals as well. This is from a longshoreman. It's his record book and it has a notary on it. Original stamps from 1937. Membership, membership book and working card. Isn't that cool? All original, real deal, no copies. 
And then there's a die cut in here, which I thought was unusual. It's very fragile. It's kind of falling apart. But yeah, here's all the... Uh, looks like they went on strike at some point. Huh. So here's the die cut. And there's the leaf that had fallen off. It's pretty darn old. It's probably from a scrapbook. So that's in there. A weird duck. An old leather button. It's real leather. And you guys are going to like this. These are... little signs for the prices of I probably I don't know maybe it was for produce and these are the holders so there's four holders these ones are kind of grungy looking this is a newer looking one but that's how they go like that and there's you get all of them these are plastic but these ones are paper yeah these are all paper Aren't those fun? Kind of dirty and old. Looks like somebody hand wrote, wrote that. So that's how they go like that. And you can use them in your junk journals like that if you want to. Here's a piece of that old apron. And you can use that as part of your one of your journals if you want to as well. And here's the paper I was telling you about. It's just cut. You can take that out if you want. But the bottom is a little bit rusted. So I liked putting this together. It's fun finding these containers and then putting cool stuff in them. And I will make sure that this has padding in it so it won't, things won't shift around. Oh, you also get this with it too. Bank of North St. St. Joseph, Missouri. It's a ledger from 1927. And the pages are kind of falling out. Well, they are, they are falling out. But you could just use those in your journal as well. Cool handwriting, huh? Looks like it was a dip pen, an ink dip pen. So that, you'll get all of that. And then I think I have one more. So this is really old. It's completely falling apart. I had to glue this part top part on it. It peeled off. It's an autograph book. 1928. It says copy of verse written by Virginia's grandmother January 30th, 1906 in my album. And it's kind of funny. It looks like like teenagers or young kids wrote in it. Um, boys what writing things to the girl that this bo this book belonged to. It's kind of cute. Kids for sale. <laughs> yeah, but just know that you might be able to restore this, but I'm telling you, it's pretty decrepit. So. That comes with this, and wait till you see what's in here. So this is not that old, of course. It's a, a little, like, lunchbox. And inside is all kinds of goodies. So I made a little pocket. I took a vintage 
envelope and then I glued this on. This is a collage I had done and, and it holds some old things in here. Little applique. These probably are from the 70s. This weird advertisement for a needle threader. It looks like the needle threader went in here. Just thought it was strange because she has a blindfold on. And then it shows you how to do the needle threader. This is probably from the 70s, don't you think? Look at that. And then this, I guess, maybe somebody knows. These look like they were, they gave you these to so that you would shop at Vons, these um, needles. And almost all the needles are in this one as well. Also made and printed in West Germany, it says. So this is from Southern California. So those all fit in here. And then this is really old. Cool packaging. I just love the graphics from this old, from these old things. Cool colors. This is probably from the 70s. Look at that. Isn't that funny? You've come a long way, baby. I remember hearing that in on commercials when I was a kid. Needles, upholstery needles, sail makers needles, and packaging or packing needles. Some plastic pearls. Very cool packaging again. Pearls made in Japan, packaged in USA. I will probably put a fun thing on top of this. I forgot to do that. A mason jar and I put some, a lot of vintage beads and buttons in this one. These are super cool beads, I mean buttons. It's a mirror, it's a mirror on the top. It's a shank button on the back made from brass. So there's a couple of those in there. Another leather button. Just some funky little bizarre pieces. What's this one? There's a really pretty bead in here. This one's pretty amazing. And some little metal pieces. Just, they just make fun things to hook onto a bulb pin for journal jewelry. Another weird little applique. <laughs> this is so cool. I love the graphics on this. This is a matchbox. Peaches. Rice casserole with Hunt's tomato sauce. That's so weird. Look, they gave you a little recipe. <laughs> so funny. Oh, somebody used it a lot too. Just cool graphics. This one is another matchbox. Actually, it's a mend mending kit. Looks like a match. Mon, is it Mammoth or Monmouth? Geiger Brothers, Lewiston, Maine. Hmm. Monmouth County. Old, old. Cruel. Needles from England. Very cool. I also have more goodies. This one has quite a bit of stuff in it. These are really old. Very cool graphics on these as well. Placket fastener, they called them. Some 
old button cards. Very patinaed already. Another little weird teeny weeny <laughs> applique. And these are also old. Sorry I keep saying they're old, but they are. I just want you to know that these are from the 30s. Somebody's, you know, quilt that they had made. This was actually something that I had was given as a name plate for a art retreat that I taught at. And the lady made all these for the host, the organizer, and then we had our name badge on them. And I'm pretty sure that's vintage. All of these are old too. Little Bo Peep. Squares that somebody looked like they cut out and to get ready for a quilt, to make a quilt. <clears throat> and then these two. And I don't do quilts. <clears throat> I just like old fabric, so. Lots of scraps. So those of you, somebody who's a quilter can make a little mini quilt with some of these old authentic pieces. I think I paid too much money for these two at a flea market. <laughs> but I just, I just like old fabric because it's really hard to find. This one, I think, um, a little child, a little girl might have made. It's very primitive. The stitching is very primitive, but how cute is that? So this is all folded up on the side. And everything kind of fits nice and tidy here. And then this is a, this has several vintage yo-yos from the 30s in it. And I just kind of put some stickers on there. And some more vintage goodies here. Just just love the graphics and everything that they did made. These are some pins that you're going to get. They're just pins I've accumulated over the years from teaching. All right, so cute, right? This is a cute little bundle. I love, this was really fun to put together. And I, like I said, I'll put the link down below. Make sure you put your timer on if there's anything you see that you really want because I'm not kidding you when I say everything sells out pretty quickly. So I think that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And those of you who have been loyal and watching, I really appreciate you. Make sure you check out the links for any of my freebies, my free guide, my free resource guide, and the links for my um, YouTube channel. I mean, my uh, online school. Also, I'm going to start giving you links to other YouTubers that don't get a lot of attention that I think should. The YouTube algorithm only shows you people who are have a huge audience or get a lot a lot a lot of views and a lot of people get kind of left out in the dust and there's a lot of talented YouTube YouTubers out there so I kind of want to you know a rising tide lifts all boats is that the saying I'd like to just give a shout out to different uh, YouTubers that I like watching that inspire me that may not get a lot of views so if you want me to give you a shout out just let me know down below and I'm going to start doing that in the next coming few videos and I will start we will start making more stuff next Tuesday see you guys then bye